We all have that moment in our lives when nostalgia just hits us. We could be window shopping, uh, someone brings up a memory, perhaps maybe you go by your old school or your old uh, you know, camping ground. Um, sometimes for a lot of us, including myself, it's, it's my smell, you know, it's a smell, right? You smell something and you go, oh my gosh, and that all of a sudden triggers a bunch of memories way back when and you're trying to put things together. Um, and so we all have some of that and I thought, hey, why don't I put that to good juice and uh, talk a little bit about CD players, uh, more specifically these CD players. And what really was happening was I was online and uh, I was browsing and someone, you know, were advertising CD players and just by happenstance I saw a very particular one, this one. This is the exact same model. I don't have the original one unfortunately, but this is the exact same model that I grew up with. So I thought what better to give um, a quick tutorial on CD players and benefits, what ESP meant, and some really cool tricks that you uh, probably didn't know about them, especially playing them and opening them and what the big deal about ESP was. If you use an MP3 player right now, I'm sorry, you just can't appreciate it. Um, just like you can't appreciate a record unless you actually play one. So I'm going to show you a really neat trick with this and why ones that were, uh, you know, that came after something like this where it did not have ESP, why something like this was a big deal, and why MP3 players that, and, and you know, basically their phones now that everyone takes for granted, not so long ago, you know, 15 years ago, was not standard. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into it, talk a little bit about the features between one or two. I'll try not to be boring, try not to talk about old memories, but I will show you some cool things about this. Now, I just in anticipation, I have not powered this up yet. I've been excited. I've been waiting to do this movie for a while just to show you how excited I am. Um, it's kind of like a, a kid taking apart something for the first time um, or uh, you know, opening up that box. I want to wait for my time and for that right moment. So let's go on a journey together. I'm going to power this up. Uh, plug it in, talk a little bit about the benefits, things that, as I said, if you have an MP3 player now, you're probably like, this is the dumbest video I've ever seen because, let's face it, you've never had to deal with any of this. But for anyone else who's over 25 years old and has probably had these or have had to use them rather than just know about them, welcome and uh, let's have some fun. So I'm going to focus the camera real quick. So we have uh, kind of the previous to a model such as this was this uh, MP, well, I'm sorry, I was gonna say MP3 player, but was this um, CD uh, CD player? Um, there were many brands out there, as you can imagine. Uh, Sony by far was well known one, right? They had the Walkman. Let me see where I'm <laughs> moving this. They had the Walkman, and basically, um, part of the uh, I think part of the adventure of having a CD player was really just about using the damn thing. Uh, it wasn't as easy as uploading a song and that's it. You know, there was a you know opportunity. So first, you had to go and find a CD that you really liked. It could be in sync. Um, it could be this guy, which I don't, I don't even know. I, I just got these a little while ago for this video. Uh, or it could be, you know, Ace of Base. And then you don't just go and buy these for 10 or $11 dollars they were. Then you read in the back of them and you try and find out about the band. Artwork was appreciated when CD players were around because let's face it, you saw it with your own eyes. This, this, um, time period was a tactile. You saw the CD, you put the CD in the CD player, <laughs> you had to refresh the batteries every, you know, every uh, eight or nine hours, depending on how long you use it and what features you had. Um, you know, there were tricks to, to how to listen to good quality music that everyone absolutely takes for granted today. Um, so technology has kind of robbed us of some of that tactile experience. So assuming you got a CD, you'd get a CD that's great. Um, Right, the back of it always had to keep clean and there were tricks about whether you could wash these or not, etc. But basically you'd open up that CD player, right? And you have the spindle here that spins. You have the laser that goes up and down that reads the music up and down on this CD. And you just put it in the spindle. You press on it till you hear that click. And you knew you were locked and loaded. Well, now you're locked and loaded. And so there you go. That is how you know you load a CD player and how one was used. Um, I already have batteries in this one, not in this one. We'll wait for that a little bit later. But I had batteries in this one, so I already put two AA batteries in there, and we're set to go. So let me go through real quick the quick features of this, and we're going to listen to some music on this and see why this 
was such a big deal because it had ESP, electronic skip protection. But we'll go through that real quick. So, you know, your standard CD player had play, stop, listen to your music, random. You could also hit program and P program mode. So if you, uh, let's say, had a CD that you didn't know anything about, you could say, press that and it would listen to the first 10 seconds of each song, like an introduction to each song automatically, which was really cool. And then you had uh, skip search back and skip search forward. A lot of these uh, you could plug straight in and then listen to music all day long without having to refresh your batteries. Some of these, like this one, if you put the right batteries in, <clears throat> the right batteries in, the right type, chemical makeup, you could actually charge the batteries as you were using it by sliding that switch. So, you know, uh, what is that? Eight, is that six volt? Six volt? I mean, I don't think this would even use close to an amp. Who knows? Um, bass boost was a big thing. Um, sometimes you just need that extra. And then you have headphones, phones, usually colored um, green. If you look at your computer and the, uh, the desktops, you'll notice that's usually the colored green for headphones. Then you have line out. Now, they're both the same type of connector, but what is the difference well headphones right is governed by the volume button right here and it puts a lot more power line out or a phone as some of them call it was if you were connecting this to an amplifier for like a bigger a lot more um sound this would be a flat uh, volume that you couldn't adjust but the idea was that it wouldn't be filtered by any bass boost or any options or volume you would use the amplifier to control all that so this gave you a flat low uh, magnitude sound and then you would adjust it via another thing so you have your volume here yes there was uh, no click up and down at least not with this model you had to use a, a pot to move it left and right and in case you're wondering not water resistant and not waterproof <laughs> Um, charge, if it was charging, it would light up, letting you know. And we're kind of back around the plug-in other than this guy right here, which is the open. And for those who really miss this, this is just for you. <laughs> All right, so uh, playing this really quickly, so I've got some headphones here but I decided to use external speakers just because, um, I should say external speaker, I'm not even sure where in the world this doodad came from, but it's an external speaker and we'll just plug it straight in. So I'm gonna plug it in the phone and then adjust the volume on this guy. Turn this volume down. Now, um, this worked great for the most part. You could load CDs in. The only challenge with something like this, and it's quite simple, is that if this is what you could term almost live music. And, and what that means is, as it's reading, it's playing the song. It's not buffering at all. There was no uh, buffering capability because the expense of memory, um, of memory chips and circuits. So. What this meant is as it was spinning, the laser was reading the valleys and the mountains, converting that using a uh, um, digital to analog converter, amplifying that, and bringing that up here. But that meant something very simple. See if you can figure out why ESP, which this had, became such a revolutionary approach to how to really use CD players, and why MP3 and, and phones um, really were the next level because this was a big problem with theirs. If you were walking with this, if you wanted to jog with the CD, if you're in a bumpy car ride, and I'm not pressing very hard, and that's the top, we can do the side. If we put it on a table,
Well, let's turn to song five. Here, here's, listen to this. So not too bad, unless you did it constantly sometimes. But any bump, this is what you would experience. And this is why there were big problems with this. When you were using um, a CD player, any sort of bump bumped either the CD or usually the laser. And as a result, the laser that was in here, which is right there, if you can see that in the video, um, it would, it would uh, get lost where it was and have to find itself the track and so on. So, let's move on to my favorite CD player because uh, I grew up with it and it is, you know, more advanced. So I was even luckier. So putting this aside, and again, nothing wrong with this, but little bump takes it all out. So let's take a look at this. So this is a Sony Discman, again, uh, as I mentioned, ESP2 electronic skip protection. If we open this up here, I do like about this version is that, you know, this model opens up, the other one opens up the lid here. This one, you get a little bit more um, area to properly put in the CD versus kind of scooting it on the side, which some people complain about scratches. Uh, again, you have laser here, moves up or down. You have the spindle that turns. There's a DC motor there, a DC motor that moves this up or down. And uh, we'll go through the side real quick. So um, basically everything's the same, right? So you have your um, charging. If you want to power up or charge it, you have the open button. You have ESP, whether you wanted to use ESP or not. It was a special button, not only because uh, they wanted uh, everyone to know that this is why this was special, but for another reason, that is it uses more battery. You have play mode, whether you want to listen to the same song over and over again. You have the repeat enter, right? Customize kind of how you want to listen to your music. You have, there's some writing down here. Um, and uh, that will, you know, it tells you your battery, uh, what track you're on, uh, what step or minute, and then the second. So how long that song is playing. So if you want to hear a specific song at a specific time, you don't have a phone that you drag your cursor, then you drop, and then that's it. Nope, you have to write down or recall the time. Um, fast forward, let go to a, uh, listen to uh, the previous song, stop, play, and pause. Um, if we go down further around here, this one had an ability for sound uh, to be adjusted. So if you wanted bass boost or no bass boost, there's a couple options there. Volume, again, using a pot, right? increasing volume going this way. And uh, then we have two other things, uh, talking about the resume first. So if you uh, didn't want to, um, shit, I don't recall what that resume was for. Resume on. I think this was a button lock, if I'm not mistaken. If you put resume off, as I said, it's been a while. I believe that meant that if you press buttons accidentally, it wouldn't, uh, it, it, it would uh, not respond to those. But I don't actually recall what resume was. So if you recall, <laughs> maybe leave that in the notes. Lastly, you had the headphones and remote. So you can see this is kind of a special um, uh, configuration because what that um, allowed someone to do is, you know, if, if you have headphones now, generally there's a button on it that says left, right, up, or down. Well, back in the day, they didn't have uh, the ability or the configuration to have all those settings go through the 1 8 connector, as you can see there. And so there was a special remote that they sold along with the headphones that was built in. As you can see, there's about four taps there, probably, uh, yep, four taps there in total that allowed uh, to have the basic um, fast forward, go back, pause your music. That's what that remote was really for. So that way, uh, when you were using this, you didn't have to um, touch here. You could touch on that, you know, on your headphones if you had it, and then hit, you know, next, up or down. And why was that important? Because this offered something that this CD player could only dream of, and that is that it had ESP. So let's figure out what the hell ESP is, because maybe that's why you came to see your video. I don't know. So, um, first thing we gotta do, we gotta load up the batteries. So let's hope this works. So as you can imagine, we got double A's, and again, you just don't get to play with batteries as as you used to anymore. Everything's plug and wait. This one, I can charge the batteries, quote unquote, in something like this in a matter of seconds. So take that quick charging technology. <laughs> so push it in here, close it up, and let's open this up. Okay, so we have three options. 
Ace of Base. This one, I have no idea what it is. Or Instinct. Okay, the mystery one. I've heard you loud and clear. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and, and then I'm gonna use this external uh, speaker so you can hear it. Put that in there and press play. Oh, oh that beep, I remember that beep. Oh, that's not good. I bought this off eBay, so I'm not sure why it didn't work, but let's play again. Oh, have I been had? Let's see. All right. Okay. So, it's not turning on. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, maybe they're, uh, sometimes the batteries, the connectors are not good enough. Oh, here we go. It was just the connector. See? Improvement. Now you know that I've actually had a CD player, the fact that I knew that that might be a fix. So it looks like ESP is already enabled. So let's see if we can zoom in on that. And it seems to have difficulty playing. You can see that it's moving inside. So again, kind of kind of cool. Um, you didn't have anything in this old one, so you got a little preview window to peek at your uh, music. And uh, it is not working. So let me make sure that it's not the CD. I don't know. Oh, you know what? There are a lot of things on here. All right, well, um, the only other one that I have is InSync. Let's make sure that it's clean. And looks all right. So let's hope that this is uh, better. All right, she's spinning. You can see the battery. Nice and full, I should hope, the brand new. You can hear it thinking. Hmm. Well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure why these were phased out at all. I mean, they work so well. <laughs> May have robbed you from that tactile feedback of CDs, but this you don't have to worry about anymore. All right, I'm going to hope that there's nothing that maybe is both of these CDs. Put in this CD since we know it's good. Give it the old, give it the old clean. Blow that out, make sure the laser is good, and let's hope that I have not been had. I was assured this was working. All right, press play. Mmm, this is not good. So I'm going to try something once, just curious to see uh, whether or not there's an issue with this guy right here. So I'm going to move, no, I can see that he's moving. All right. Put him back. So, don't try this at home because you probably don't have one of these, but let me kind of wipe that laser off. I know it's not the best. Critics, feel free to, <laughs> just want to see why this isn't working. All right, now. Laser was dirty. <laughs> yeah. Let's turn up the volume. Mm, mm, mm. So, um, as you can see, some difficulties. So, I don't know. Maybe laser was dirty, uh, or maybe it just said, "Don't ever play in sync again." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, 
Great, so let's talk a little bit about ESP and why it made such a big difference. So let me skip a couple songs ahead just for the fun. Oh, love those beeps, eh? Wow, look how fast that played. Did you notice, by the way, how quickly it found that song compared to the older one? There's six. Wow. You just don't see that. You don't have to worry at all about that. Now, here's, let's talk about ESP. That's what you came here for. All right. So it's just a good song. Just give it a moment. Now, ooh, oh, there it is, skipping. That's a long interruption. Look how long you have to wait for that to find that song. So if you want to put, you know, large speakers, right, that are moving this, all day long, this is what you're going to get, music skipping. Dang it. So how did Sony fix this? Now I'm not sure if Sony fixed but let me show you how they fixed this, the coolest thing. First, open it up. No problem. Second, what we're going to do is we're going to tell this CD player that it's closed so that way it'll work because if you press play now, nothing happens. So we're going to trip it. We're going to hit this micro switch there and now it thinks it's closed. There's just a little, little guy right there. And now we're going to press play. Oh, look at that. Ooh, so exciting. Now, it's going to play where we left off. Well, I guess not. Okay. Right, because we opened the case. Now, I'm going to turn it up. Now, watch what happens when I tap the CD. See what happened? It automatically played the song forward and recorded what was ahead of that CD and remembered it for about four or five seconds. But when you turn on ESP, which is already technically on by default, I guess, but when you turn on ESP, now watch what happens. In the background, as the song is playing, the laser is going ahead of that song and it's recording what the next 30, 40 seconds of that song are. Why is that important? Well, because as it memorizes what's ahead of that song, it plays from the memory, not live from the CD. So when you hit a bump, it's now playing from the memory, not from the CD. Hence, electronic skip protection. How does it prevent skip? It memorizes the music ahead of time by dumping that information into the memory, or the buffer as it were, and it plays it out at a slower speed here. In fact, it works so well, you can do something like this. Huh. Without missing a beat. Pretty damn cool, huh? So, here's another example. Again, it's remembering that music ahead. Um, so we'll give it, I'm not sure how quick it is. It might take, um, you know, maybe 10 seconds for it to remember as fast. Memory was expensive. So when this came out, yeah, there was a reason why. But you can also do something like this. So you can hear that song. Oh, yes, yes, handsome. have to admit, that's pretty damn cool. So, that's what makes this electronic skip protection so successful, is that it just remembers the music ahead of time.